Hello, my name is Paul Chambers and I'm a graduate civil engineer. I'm currently working on the Humber Tunnel Pipeline for Skanska National Grid and I used to work on Crossrail. This year I'm one of Professor Tim Broyd's President's Apprentices and today I'm going to be showing you around the brand new tunnelling exhibition at the Institution of Civil Engineers at One Great George Street. As we enter the exhibition we're met with this timeline which runs us through the history of tunnel construction in ancient Egypt and running through to the future of Europe's mega projects. Some of our greatest projects just begin with an idea and often civil engineers ideas can come from nature. On this first display you can see how Brunel gained inspiration for his Thames Tunnel from the shipworms and how Japanese civil engineers developed the bullet trains based on the flight of a kingfisher. We can also see how civil engineers are completing the circle with the construction of Wallasey Island as part of Crossrail as a new nature reserve for England's wildlife. The second display shows different tunnel construction techniques, so you can see how engineers have solved different problems with different techniques. Our third and fourth displays go through some of the most important historic construction projects, not only to the ICE but to the world of tunnelling. On one side we see the Thames Tunnel which revolutionised transport below ground and when Brunel finished it, was known as the eighth wonder of the world. On the other side, we see Baselgate sewers, which became the embankment and revolutionised how we deal with public health globally. Civil engineers always have to come up with new solutions, but often the problems aren't that different. We've just seen Baselgate sewers. The Lee Tunnel, our next display, goes through the 21st century equivalent of that problem. One of the most famous tunnel construction projects of our generation is the Channel Tunnel. In this next display you can see how engineers from all across the world and the UK come together to solve a problem that was for a long time thought to be impossible. Tunnels aren't just for transporting things, they're also for transporting the lifeblood of society, which is often power. This display takes us through the London Power Tunnels project, which supplied electricity for London's future. This is one of the first construction projects that I visited as an undergraduate and I've since gone on to work for National Grid in one of its successor tunnels. One of the really special things about this job was the little impact it had for a £1 billion tunnel network beneath the streets of London. It's not all about London. I was in secondary school in Belfast when this sewage project was carrying on. The first time I saw it was on Top Gear, which is proof that tunnels are often out of sight and out of mind. This display takes us through how the engineers built this massive system which revolutionised and future-proofed the future of Belfast sewage works. As we fold the timeline through the exhibition, we've seen the history of London's public health projects from Basildon sewers to the more recent Lee Tunnel. This next display shows the future of projects in this area with Thames Tideway. This mega project will protect London for the next future generations in terms of public health. The construction method for these tunnels is a tunnel boring machine and Tideway have kindly donated this TBM which shows just how complicated the inside of these machines can be. This display is about a project that's close to both my heart and that of many other engineers across our industry. For the last decade Crossrail has been the largest construction project in Europe and will totally revolutionise how Londoners move about the city. This display goes through some of the incredibly complex problems that were solved as part of the tunnelling system which has added much needed capacity to the London Underground network, which was stretched. The £15 billion railway had a great deal of technical problems to overcome, some of which have touched upon in this display. I have only been able to introduce you to a small selection of the stories that can be told at the ICE's tunnelling exhibition. But as we walk through the centre of the timeline, you can see these two touchscreen displays that show you the world of opportunities that tunnelling can bring and the different projects and people that have played a part in them across the globe. One of the most complicated and impressive projects of recent times in tunnelling was the Gotthard Base Tunnel, which runs for 57 kilometres beneath a mountain in Switzerland, providing much needed relief to the Swiss rail freight network. This project was incredibly difficult and took quite a long time, and this display shows some of the challenges that had to be overcome by the team. The exhibition has taken us through the beginnings and the history of tunnel construction, right through some of its most notable projects. It also shows us some of the most notable future projects, one of which is this Feymarn Belt project connecting Germany and Denmark. 
This will be the longest road and rail immersed tunnel in the world when it's completed in 2028 and there's good evidence for why we need more people in the industry to help us meet the challenges like this of the future. One of the most entertaining displays at the tunneling exhibition is this immersive virtual reality experience of some of our biggest infrastructure projects recently. This runs through Thames Tideway and two of the crossrail tunnels, so you can have a look around yourself in one-to-one -one scale VR before the railway opens in 2018. Many of the projects we've seen today have tunnel boring machines as a part of them. This Lego TBM shows us what goes on inside them. We can see here at the front end, the cutting head, which works its way through the ground. The spoil is then taken up through this screw system and then fed onto the conveyor belt, which feeds it out of the tunnel. Then to create the tunnel itself, we bring in concrete segments like these, which is fed to the front and used to build the lining. Once the lining's in place, these jacks can then push the whole machine forward bit by bit to create the tunnel. To my left, you can see an area for building Lego TBMs, some of which are already quite good. And then you can also go in for a tunnel selfie as part of the competition. This exhibition shows the critical part that tunneling can play in building a better society. We've seen the lifeblood that can be brought through our infrastructure projects, which is why I became a civil engineer, to make a real difference to how we live and how we work. We need the future generation of engineers to meet the challenges that we can see in this exhibition. So please, bring the future generation of engineers. I look forward to welcoming you here to the IC's Tunneling Exhibition.